Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. Oh, Jesus. On this gorgeous Wednesday, September 13, 2017. And uh, this is going to be part two of my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I was so rudely interrupted by these absolute clueless fucking morons who have just decided they're, they're going to move in. They're going to move in uh, about 40 feet. I uh, have only myself to blame for my not pulling the fucking gate across the road behind me. You know, don't get me going. I'm going to start sounding like uh, Donald Trump about putting up that wall. I guess it's just a cultural difference about the the idea of personal space that uh, honkies and anyway we're, we're gonna leave that alone and, and I don't give a fuck if these guys want to sit around and listen to this rant maybe they could learn something anyway so where was I before uh, I was invaded from our clueless southern neighbors shall we say anyway we were in the middle of talking about uh, various hurricane news and climate change denial news and whatnot, and I don't know where this one uh, weighs in. Uh, I, I am embarrassed for The Guardian. For The Guardian. I, I actually financially support The Guardian for their hard-hitting environmental reporting. And, and this is the, edit, the the environmental page editor himself, some clueless fucking limp dick mainstream environmentalist called Jonathan Watts. Jonathan Watts needs to have his head yanked out of his ass and be fired from the Guardian. Hurricanes wreak the havoc of climate change. But is a green energy solution in sight. Uh, Jonathan, I got some bad news for you. There is no green energy solution to this problem. Uh, you know, except possibly a, 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 a fucking seven billion green condoms. Uh, pull your fucking head out of your ass, Guardian, talking about how the, your goddamn little solar panels and uh, your fucking solar panels in your windmills and all of this shit are, are, are going to turn this freight train around. Like the debate over gun control, the public discussion in the U.S. about whether to take action on the climate has often been characterized as a struggle between powerful lobbies and violent reality. <sighs> After each campus shooting or hurricane disaster, th this is the Guardian comparing Hurricane Irma to a campus shooting, there is a brief uptick of concern followed by a gradual return to entrenched positions as the National Rifle Association or the oil industry reassert their influence, inevitably raising the question, just how bad do things have to get to reach a tipping point? My question for you, Jonathan, is how bad do things have to to get for you goddamn little limp dick mainstream environmentalists to pull your fucking heads out of your asses. Goddamn clueless morons. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, the past few days have shown not only that the scale of catastrophe is getting worse, but the price of a solution is getting cheaper. Anyway, I've heard just an, about enough from The Guardian to make me want to cancel my subscription. I want my money back. 
fucking clueless morons. Uh, and, and ABC News uh, is doing better than The Guardian on this story. Bracing for strong future hurricanes in coastal cities without knowing patterns. Yep. The devastation left in coastal U.S. cities after Hurricanes Harvey and Irma has many wondering if multiple high-category hurricanes making landfall will be a new normal moving forward, leaving questions about how coastal cities can prepare for future storms. Uh, many wondering... And we have the same usual uh, mainstream media stuff about how we're going to get ourselves out of this mess. Here is building barriers. Uh, how about the option of incredibly expensive Massive engineering is one way to try to protect some urban areas from storms. There you go. How about this one for an idea from ABC News? Hallelujah, since the Guardian was unable to think about, think of this one. How about one of the solutions could be to create less infrastructure instead of more of it. How about that? Called, uh, called not rebuilding. Not rebuilding after hurricanes. What an idea. Uh, maybe, maybe Jonathan Watts from the, from the Guardian needs to go over and learn something from ABC News. Give it the fuck up. Ah, oh, Jesus. All right, moving along. Uh, okay, I've never heard of this thing called Green Reads. Uh, and they have their own little roundup of, of stories themselves. I kind of like this. So this is their own roundup here after these hurricanes climate change an undeniable truth as hurricanes pummel our southern coast and wildfires rage <coughs> through the west can <coughs> americans finally put the debate to rest hush those are those are clueless morons who don't who do not understand the concept of personal space sancho panza Anyway, so they look at a bunch of stories. Uh, here is Rolling Stone. Uh, Houston proudly touts itself as the city with no limits, playing up its Wild West heritage of endless land and opportunity. But it is also the largest U.S. city to have no zoning laws. You can build whatever you want, whenever you want. While that makes developers happy, it's not how you build a climate resilient city. They refer you over to Rolling Stones. Here is a story from Vox looking, actually going back over there to South Asia, uh, where 41 million climate refugees are stumbling around in the mud over there. Um, here is good old KQED from San Francisco looking at uh, Miami's poorest citizens. Here and now then they uh, then they send us over to the Guardian. Many of us share some dim apprehension that the world is flying out of control that the center cannot hold. No shit, Sherlock. 
raging wildfires, once in 1,000 year storms, and lethal heat waves have now become fixtures of the evening news. Peter Brannan examines mass extinction events and the catastrophic outcomes of rising temperatures. Oh, these are actual videos. So this is a video from The Guardian. Okay. Here is The Intercept. Anyone who has children in this troubling time, any clueless fucking moron who has children in this troubling time will appreciate the dilemma, how do you talk to your children about climate change? What you do is, if you want to talk to your children about climate change, get out the, you know, the little magic markers and the little pieces of cardboard and make these fun little signs that even your, your, your second grader can understand. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, environmental progress requires true leadership. Uh, <laughs> okay, moving along. Let's look at the true leadership. The true leadership here in 2017 from good old Time Magazine. No, Donald Trump still has not changed his mind about climate change after Hurricane Irma and Harvey. The White House said Monday, the, the talking White House said Monday that President Donald Trump has not altered his views on climate change despite scientists warning warnings at Hurricanes Irma and Harvey, which recently ravaged the United States, are evidence the warming global climate is making extreme weather worse. There you go. As recently, last, as last month, the Trump administration did not renew the Advisory Committee for Sustained National Climate Assessment, which is designed to help U.S. employees understand the government's climate reports, because there are no government climate reports. Uh, there you go. Uh, These remarks from the White House come after Hurricane Irma, which struck Florida on Sunday, left more than 1.3 million people in the state without power and caused at least 127,000 people to evacuate their homes. Uh, there you go. But good old Trump is donating one million dollars of his own fortune to help those impacted by Hurricane Harvey. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, from Donald Trump just to one of his White House aides. White House aide will not say if global warming fuels hurricanes. This is President Trump's Homeland Security Advisor, the advisor on, on, on threats to the security of our homeland, is, hmm, this is Tom Bossert declined to say on Monday whether climate change is fueling powerful hurricanes like Harvey and Irma, but suggested the federal government will eventually look into a possible connection. Quote, we will have to do a larger trend analysis 
at a later date. Okay, but finally, finally, who we need to have as Trump's Homeland Security Advisor would be none other than uh, our old buddy Pope Francis. Many versions of this story. Pope Francis on climate change. This is the Huff Post. Pope Francis on climate change, quote, man is stupid. Climate change denials amid catastrophic hurricanes are a reminder that humans are not a particularly smart species. Pope Francis said Sunday while flying over areas in the Caribbean decimated by Hurricane Irma, quote, man is stupid. The Pope said referencing a passage in the Old Testament, quote, when you don't want to see, you don't see. Man is a stupid and, and hard-headed being who does not see. There you go. Uh, continuing on, those who deny climate change need to go to scientists and ask them. He said the scientific community has been clear and precise in linking human activities to the ongoing crisis and that quote, each person has a moral responsibility. There you go. Uh, jur when journalists ask the Pope about the moral responsibility that political leaders have to fight against climate change, Francis warned that history will judge those decisions, close quote, and that if humans fail to climate change, we, quote, will go down. There you go. Uh, thank you, Pope Francis. Okay, here is some newspaper called The Sun. Climate change denial is an insult to victims. When, if not now, is the time to talk about global warming and what to do about it? The answer from the Trump administration and the Republican Party basically is succinct in its willful ignorance. How about never? Is never good for you? No national U.S. administration would look at the devastation from Hurricane Harvey and Irma and seek to deny climate change. Oh, I'm sorry, no rational U.S. administration would look. Uh, at present, however, there is no rational U.S. administration. We have instead a president and an Environmental Protection Agency chief who refuses to acknowledge the obvious. <sighs> Jesus. And then they just go through the, uh, you know, just the list, the same list, the growing list of the Donald Trump ad administration uh, just absolutely ramming their heads up, their asses, and just their braying ignorance uh, about this. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Uh, now, unfortunately, my computer ate this story from some outfit called CNS News. CNS News with, the, with this absolute clown just claiming right out there loud and clear in a headline on the Yahoo News Science pages, there is absolutely zero connection between climate change and Hurricane Harvey and Irma and all the rest. 
And then when you uh, find out who wrote the story, it was one of these fossil-fueled Koch brother uh, propaganda uh, idiots, I don't remember his name, it got eaten working for the Heritage Foundation. So we now have the Heritage Foundation, perhaps the single most obscene uh, prop, fossil fuel corporation propaganda outfit on the planet being presented as news on the mainstream media. You know, I'm in the middle of reading George Orwell's 1984, but at least here is one climate change denier. Uh, that hallelujah, brother. This is some guy I have never heard of. Some one of these conservative right-wing radio show host, Mark, this Levin or Levine. Uh, Levine, man cannot do a damn thing about hurricanes and climate change. There is no answer. Can I tell you a little secret? There is no answer. That's right. I've said it. There's no answer. Man cannot do a damn thing about it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Levine, for pointing this one out. Uh, and I'm just going to wrap up with one more. I've got three more. I'm going to save this story. Wind farms, Britain's offshore wind farming boom is concentrating power in the hands of a very few large corporations. Uh, we're going to save that till Monday. But we're going to wrap up this week's climate change meltdown roundup with this no shit Sherlock story about global dimming. About global dimming, you may have heard something about this from our favorite doomsday pornographer writing about this, and here it is finally showing up in the mainstream media. Asia's air pollution is miles above the U.S. Could it cool the earth. There you go. Scientists are examining whether tiny particles drifting over the U.S. from Asia, mainly China, are shading North America. That, that, that's exactly uh, what, what they're doing. Uh, since the 1990s, scientists have been discussing using aircraft to inject aerosols, such as sulfates, into the atmosphere as a form of geoengineering to mimic volcanic eruptions that sometimes cool the planet by casting shades of particulate matter. It's controversial, but some scientists see it as one option to limit global warming if, if nations fail to stem the output of greenhouse gases before a tipping point is reached. But there is accumulating evidence that geoengineering has already started unintentionally. And then they launch into this perfectly good story about global dimming. And that's exactly what has happened. It's exactly what happened right here uh, last week, where I think a week ago today, it was supposed to be like 100 fucking degrees right here in Washington State in September after Labor Day. But it never got above like 88 that day because of all the goddamn wildfire smoke. Uh, blocking the sun and uh, you know so yesterday and, and I was doing this story about how all of this air pollution and all of this particulate matter this suit whatever you want to call it is is poisoning four and a half billion people on the planet sending them to an early grave 
according to the World Health Organization, that four and a half billion people on this planet are breathing air that is over two times, two times the daily maximum of this shit. And uh, so now we see that the very shit that is killing all of these, that's killing four and a half billion people, is the same shit saving seven and a half billion people from global warming. Guys, it is why we are so fucked. We are fucked coming, we are fucked going. If we clean up the particulate matter, then we, what we've done is erase the unintentional geoengineering and the climate and the and the heat it goes skyrocketing up. The as Andy was saying in uh, in one of his comments, the trap has been sprung. We are fucked. We're fucked if we do. We're fucked if we don't. And with that, I am going to wrap up part two. Of, the, of my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant and uh, get out here and enjoy this gorgeous day and go practice my Spanish with my new neighbors who seem like very nice young fellows and I'm sure they are I'm sure they are very nice young fellows maybe we'll have some tacos tonight Smoke them if you got them, guys. We're fucked. <laughs>